All right. Hello, everybody. So no worries. You can continue mingling uh, right after yours and I. Um, chatting a little bit on uh, today's topic, vulnerability management. All right. I hope you can see my screen and I just uh, let Yoris join the broadcast. Just have to find him. There we go. The guy with the ugly avatar, that's me. <laughs> hey, Yaris. Okay, actually, it took a couple of seconds to uh, to find you in the in that in, uh, increasingly uh, increasing list of uh, of, uh, of the audience and participants. So, um, very well. Um, as always, a quick remark from my side regarding the rules of engagement. Um, so, uh, as you probably already got to know uh, throughout the very first uh, minutes. A couple of experts here, so please don't hesitate to exchange with one another and, and ask questions if you have them. Uh, learn uh, from from the experience of others as well as they can learn from you. Uh, so that is what it's all about. Um, use the opportunity to expand your network uh, through engaging with the other SAP and security professionals here. And uh, yeah, and um, all the time use the chat function uh, to send questions. Uh, if I will be happy to, to, to collect them. Um, also uh, find uh, yours or my contact details uh, available in the, in the participant profile. Uh, so you can reach out to us. And if you have in general um, feedback you want to share with us, if you want to propose uh, maybe um, another topic for, for the next session, uh, please uh, just send an email to welcome at nomarkey.com. Um, all right. So uh, this time it's about rethinking SAP vulnerability management. And uh, yeah, vulnerability management is never an easy topic. Uh, and neither is it when it comes to managing SAP vulnerabilities. And yeah, we want to um, exchange um, um, how we can improve vulnerability management in the SAP ecosystem. Um, so kind of what can we do about here? And uh, yeah, for this time, the very first time uh, in tackling SAP security together, I have invited a guest. Uh, so we're both um, doing a kind of a little bit of an interview, um, which is Joris van der Wies from protect for us So where um, with protect for us he is very much specialized on the topic of SAP application security and uh, with a very strong call focus on dealing with the challenges of SAP vulnerability management. Um, so Joris, maybe you just uh, introduce yourself uh, with a few words. Sure, yes. Thanks for being here, uh, Marco and the rest of No Monkey. I like the whole concept you guys do uh, with these sessions. Um, my name is Joris van der Vis, indeed, um, the co-founder of protect for this um, Already working in the SAP arena for quite some time, mainly in technical roles, SAP bases, and uh, some programming. Um, been involved in the implementations, and already for the past, I think, 15 years, really specialized in the area of SAP platform security, SAP cybersecurity, as you would call it nowadays. Um, I'm from the Netherlands, um, apart from the customers that we uh, help and consult with uh, software and consultancy, I also do SAP security research and reported over 100 vulnerabilities to SAP. So these were translated in security notes uh, that you might have seen. We'll discuss that in this session. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation, Marco. So you, you're feeding your own purpose uh, for the for the uh, vulnerability management capabilities uh, that that you offer with you know creating new vulnerabilities, so to say, right? Uh, exactly. <laughs> no better, better finding them, yeah. <laughs> so they were there in the first place already. We just reported <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. 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 
So do, doing the, actually the very first step when we're talking about it of the vulnerability management part, which is the, the identification part. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, just want to uh, introduce a little bit uh, before we, we digging into to the questions um, on, you know, how, how we can approach uh, vulnerability management for SAP nowadays, what we are actually talking about when we use the term vulnerability management. So first of all, starting with uh, vulnerability. So uh, just uh, took the, the definition from ISO 20,072, uh, 20, which is uh, that the vulnerability is uh, defined as a weakness of an asset or group um, of assets that can be exploited by one or more threats. So um, please remind the term threat in here that is already in that ISO um, definition incorporated. Um, I will come back to that with some, some, some opinion on uh, what are might be the challenges when it comes to vulnerability management. And uh, yeah, the definition of vulnerability management is basically the process um, that uh, manages these kind of vulnerabilities um, that um, identifies uh, vulnerabilities and um, evaluates the risk uh, related to them. Uh, so also another interesting term, which is risk in relation and where um, like here, the definition from the Sands Institute. Um, so Eva will, uh, will um, also post a, a white paper in the chat later on, on um, I think uh, still, even if it's from 2013, one of the best white papers when it comes to the to the fundamentals of vulnerability management, where also in this white paper it's being stated that the evaluation of a vulnerability can either yield to a correction um, uh, that removes uh, or mitigates the risk. I, I like to add the mitigation part here as well, um, or um, to formally accepting the risk uh, that is associated with a vulnerability. Um, so, which means we are not always supposed to remediate vulnerabilities necessarily, uh, depending on, on, on what are the objectives and, uh, and the individual goals of the organization um, performing vulnerability management. So probably would like to remediate them all, but uh, uh, there are some constraints typically associated with them. Well, so which brings me to my first question, Joris, what do you think is actually the state of SAP vulnerability management nowadays? So what are your findings at, uh, at, at your customers? So the short answer, it can definitely be improved. The bit longer answer is that there are really good examples and there are really bad examples. So um, and we are talking about processes here. So that can sometimes become a bit theoretical and maybe even boring. Mm. However, I think that this actually is a really important process because this is actually the only real process that 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 uh, for sure helps to make sure that your uh, business critical SAP systems are safe and secure. So if you ask me what the status is, then again, it greatly depends what we see in general is that the more large enterprise customers, so the really big SAP using organizations do have processes in place and do address this topic on a regular periodic interval, mainly on a monthly basis, right after SAP security patch uh, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. the, uh, a lot of smaller companies are still not there yet, definitely. Mm -hmm. From having no uh, vulnerability management at all, or in the middle, like doing a little bit every now and then, a patch here, a patch there, if there is some time, if we have some mm. people available. And there is a lot of improvement. Mm. Yeah. Maybe we just lay out the, 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 the process as such once, um, how that can typically look like, uh, or how, how typically a vulnerability management process is defined, uh, preparation, um, where like the idea is, you, you have an idea and you define a scope of uh, where you want to carry out vulnerability management, starting with, um, you know, being able to identify vulnerabilities and you plan accordingly. So that's that's kind of the, the interesting part you've mentioned that some organizations already fail to determine a plan. 
um, as you said, for example, in what kind of interval, for example, do I want to uh, execute um, uh, this process and things like that. Um, then, of course, like scanning. So being able to uh, scan, identify, monitor the scan. Yeah. So is actually my scan uh, working through, whether it's uh, um, supported by a tool or when it's where it's part of, let's say, for example, penetration test, communicating the findings. Um, up to uh, remediating uh, or mitigating the findings. Um, also, uh, however, to the point that, uh, that you might maybe decide um, not to uh, carry out any remediation or mitigation activities because of a, uh, of a low risk. And then, of course, that you verify if the, if the correction uh, <laughs> as such was, uh, uh, was, was working fine so that you perform a rescan. Uh, and other last the findings again of the rescan. Uh, so wh where do you actually see nowadays, uh, like I've already uh, mentioned that the planning part, but the sides of the planning, where do you see um, um, uh, customers uh, typically spending the most time on or um, what, is, what is the most um, resource consuming part uh, from your experience in the SAP area? Yeah, so that's by far the remediation part. That is like eighty percent of this of the process. It's mm -hmm. good. It's a process. It should look. And um, why that is is um, not so much from the technology part because the implementation of a patch. I mean, it, it takes some time. But quite often we see a lot of companies spend a lot of time here in the whole, um, let's say, change management part. That's adding a lot of time, getting approvals, and also the testing part. Um, depending on your risk appetite and your test scenarios, it can add a lot of time as well. Uh -huh. So it's definitely remediation. And, and maybe also good to mention, if you look at it from a more holistic view where uh, people, processes and technology are involved, the remediation part is, is definitely um, one of those steps where, where you need everything. You need people with the right skills to make sure that they know what to do, how to apply the patch, make a proper risk assessment. You need uh, definitely a process to embed everything. And um, the technology can be really supported when it comes to the scanning part, the automation part, and really gaining insight in your landscape. What components are there? What do I have running? What is filmable and whatnot? So everything comes together in a remediation part. Uh, so I, I was actually wondering, um according what you see as the root causes why the remediation part and I think we, we we didn't mention it explicitly but of course like vulnerability management um it, that um, let's say that the quality of the process as such is very much dependent on on, on how much time you spend uh, throughout the process um because uh, time is of course key in in, in managing the risk uh, associated with different vulnerabilities um and uh, reducing the risk, of course. Um, so, and when you say, when we, and I, th I think I can totally agree with that, when the remediation part is supposed to be uh, the, the, the step in the process that requires the most time. Um, do you find the root cause, um, when you say it's about the change management procedures behind of that, do you find the root cause of the lack of awareness with the associated people in the change management process so that like that there's maybe no urgency in carry out the, the, the changes uh, in relation to the remediation? Um, or is it like really that the, that the change management process as such with all of the compliance paperwork that, that typically has to be done is just this time consuming? Yeah, so the, the latter, but, but on top of that, um, SAP systems are critical for businesses. So even getting downtime sometimes can take a mm. lot of time. They say, well, we have this project that needs to go live or the business is depending on the systems. We are closing this uh, fiscal year. So you cannot patch now. You can do it next month or, or in two months. Uh -huh. So that adds another, another, let's say, difficulty specifically for SOP systems where I think everybody find it, finds it really normal to apply patches to their operating systems or their laptops or their mobile phones. We just... We just push them. The thing for SAP systems is that there seems to be like a reversed um, uh, law 
where where the more critical and, 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 and the more critical a system is the the less often we apply patches to it because it might break mm -hmm. some might impact business so that's definitely the case for sap systems mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I, I can just add a very good example to uh, to that. We we recently have uh, completed a penetration test uh, uh, at one SAP customer, which, like from our end, was very successful. Um, so uh, created a, a lot of uh, very severe findings uh, that oh, yeah we we didn't create them, but we were actually able to 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 find them and to highlight them. And uh, uh, like as a result of that, they're saying they will be they have to work on on remediating and mitigating these findings for at least half a year. Where uh, as a result of that, it's kind of obvious that this organization will create a vulnerability backlog down the line, because if they are just working on these findings that has been created in a in a in a one week penetration test, while you know, still there will be security notes published by SAP. There will be a third party add-on provider will maybe introduce fixes for vulnerabilities. They found like new code and new developments they are doing because they are also right at the, at the transformation um, to, to S4HANA. Um, will introduce new vulnerabilities again. So in the end, because of that slow remediation process, it will pile up a vulnerability backlog and that will continuously grow uh, potentially. Um, so do you have similar experience because you're also conducting penetration tests as far as I know? Yeah, we do. But this is an example I think that is uh, really, really extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, typically when we do penetration testing and when we discuss the findings with customers, they always, uh, I mean, we never have a discussion on, let's say, how critical findings are. Is it high? Is it very high? They know, they accept that, they agree on that. Um, but then, and, and that's what I agree with, then it might take some time before action is taken. So even though that they understand the risk, uh -huh. still somehow it, it takes some time. And it's not always clear why that is, but in general, um, the, the, the reasons I just mentioned. SAP is complex, there's a lot of complexity. Customers don't always have the right uh, let's say uh, people and skills to do the patching, mm -hmm. maybe outsource, they have a lot of processes in place. And let's not forget there can be a lot of different components to patch as well. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm not saying it's easy. There is no silver bullet, um, but it, it does start with at least the awareness of the customer that this is critical and they need to do something. Mm -hmm. And it helps if there is a process in place because then you can just follow the process, right? Yeah, like we, we're already discussing some of the current challenges, what makes it hard specifically in the SAP area. Um, I think uh, an, another thing to mention is that like very modern approaches in terms of um, uh, for outside of the SAP or classic SAP technology stack, uh, such as um, runtime application self-protection. Um, so libraries you can link into your applications to, for example, uh, mitigate certain uh, certain threat vectors um, or, or, or prevent, for example, certain privilege escalation scenarios um, or, you know, containerizing settings um, to, to um, make uh, a stronger segregation of the actual uh, component uh, from the uh, from the more privileged area as the operating system and so on. These are because also, of course, how SAP applications are being used, these are not still yet applicable for, for, for most of the classic SAP technology, including s we are using nowadays. Uh, so I think that's, uh, uh, that's uh, another issue that also like security professionals, probably I can uh, think of maybe are a little bit concerned uh, because the, the, the modern approaches they find nowadays to as part of their vulnerability tool chain is just not working yet in SAP. Yeah. Well, what, uh, what the common mistakes have you recognized at, at your customers, uh, Joris, when it comes to like, uh, you know, implementing an SAP vulnerability management, for example, so starting with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a couple of things. One is um, it helps if customers start to have proper insight where to start. I mean, you can just blindly start doing things, but then you might 
miss a lot of things. So it helps if you get a good oversight insight. And keep in mind, vulnerability management is not just about patch management. Mm. That's also what many people uh, not always see. It's also about configuration management. So there are parameters that can be set in an inconsistent or even insecure way or other settings that can really lower the security of your SAP system. So it's all those areas you have to look at. And what, what, what common mistakes are is that sometimes people try to do this manually and that's, that's really hard. And this is where technology can help. There's yeah. hundreds of parameters, thousands of security nodes that can be missing. It's not possible anymore to do that without automation. So you should yeah. definitely automate things. And maybe um, one thing to add there, and that's not just a mistake, but that's what we see also. It's just hard to find people with understanding of SAP systems and how to properly patch and secure that. It's not a mistake. It's just hard to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a, I, I, I kind of took a meme over here. I think that that summarizes this very well. So that like the, the, the people who are actually extinguishing the fire, uh, that there are just uh, maybe a little few of them uh, compared to the size of the fire they, they're actually facing, right? <laughs> so to, to put it kind of uh, kind of in the picture, yeah. So yeah, uh, and of course, like um, maybe a technology in terms of uh, of, a, of a better water pump or something like that uh, can be can be certainly uh, at least ease the pain that there's certain that there's really a lack of resource to uh, to carry out the, the remediation or mitigation activities. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, which brings me to my next question: How how is it going to be in the future, Joris? Um, uh, like uh, you remember, uh, you're, you remember the, the the invite for the event. I've actually put a quote from from Bruce Schneier in that uh, Bruce Schneier, um, and uh, I have to admit I'm kind of a fanboy. Um, well, mentioned that down the line, so probably in the next 20 or 30 years, there will be like no software vulnerabilities as we know them today because there will be measures implemented with you know artificial intelligence and so on and so forth that will uh, kind of make software flawless. Uh, uh, he is actually, um, uh, you know, uh, taking this as a, as a prediction, um, but uh, maybe, not, maybe not going this far in the future, uh, when, whenever this future is about to be there. What do you see like as the future challenges for SAP customers with vulnerability management in the next uh, five to 15 years? Yeah, so it's nice that to fantasize on these uh, futuristic scenarios. <laughs> AI machines are fighting each other, the good AI and the bad AI. I mean, it's really nice to dream about it and fantasize about it. But for practical, uh, uh, for customers in the coming years, they, they need a more practical approach. We are not there yet. And the way I see it is that in the, in the, in at least on the, in the midterm, software is still built by humans and will still contain bugs and security vulnerabilities. So uh, uh, patching will remain needed. Um, customers also make a lot of changes to parameters and other settings that might change over time. So it's definitely needed to check it on a periodic base. So um, the only thing, uh, what will remain of vulnerabilities on the short term and the midterm what might be improved is just how fast we can find them, how fast we can mitigate them, and how uh, yeah, eff efficiently we can remediate them, so to say. Um, mm. That might increase uh, with, with new tooling, with maybe SaaS solutions where the vendor is able to, to patch things more fast or with on-premise um, mechanisms like near zero downtime, that will definitely improve, but still, you need a bit of downtime probably you need to patch probably and you need to test probably so that will not change on the mm. short term, i think and and things are even getting more complicated because uh, with all these open source components over the past few months we saw a lot of security notes on open source components like uh, log4j spring for a shell quite recently and that also heavily impacts the more uh, SaaS kind of solutions that SAP has. So, and that's also good to know, it, it's, it doesn't just affect on-premise systems. Mm. Also, definitely SaaS solutions with open source components are definitely vulnerable. 
So we'll, 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 we'll be around for some years to help customers with that, I'm pretty sure. Mm, yeah, I think I can really, I can very much agree with that. Uh, like uh, another uh, challenge I, s I just see in the next couple of years specifically uh, for those SAP customers who not only uh, doing the transformation to S4HANA, but also in a hybrid operation scenario. So running on, on uh, running their, their SAP on uh, infrastructure as a service, such as AWS, Azure, GCP, whatsoever. Um, while um, they, with that approach, they, on the one hand, they have the whole uh, additional topic of, of cloud security compliance management um, and, and cloud vulnerability management as such. Um, in addition to, um, you know, they will be using uh, SAP Industry Cloud, they will be using the business technology platform and so on. So there are various areas where they need to uh, additionally search for vulnerabilities, scan for vulnerabilities uh, with like not one tool fits all approach, but there will be like several specialized tools in the different areas. And I, I just see also customers already struggling with um, um, having these different vulnerability sources kind of synchronized with one another. Uh, so there are already like uh, infosec companies out there, uh, there like where their value proposition is only to basically uh, manage the different vulnerability information, metadata uh, on, on one place. Uh, while like beforehand, it, it had, you, you were a scanner company, and now it's basically infosec becomes more and more of a data crunching topic, I believe, and that's I think going to be uh, uh, one of the future challenges we see in the next couple of years. Yeah, things will not be uh, easier. We also see that we have mm. quite a lot of customers that use hybrid scenarios, right, where they have a lot of on-premise systems, some systems deployed in the cloud or EaaS kind of scenarios. And yeah, you need to oversee that all. Mm. Yeah, and, and the last question, eh, will there be more or less vulnerabilities? I'm not sure. I don't know. Software quality improves definitely. But in the end, does it really matter if you on a monthly basis have like like 10 vulnerabilities or, or, or six? I mean, in the end, you just need one uh, mm. for a bunch. So in the end, I think there will be, there might be less vulnerabilities, maybe over time, but yet there will be vulnerabilities anyway. So you cannot ignore that. Yeah, just just tell that the the, the Oracle customers who recently uh, got what was it about five hundred uh, patches? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. So, yeah. so I think the most important thing we, we, we both, let's say, from an advisory perspective can say is uh, SAP vulnerability. You can do it. It's, it's hard, but it's, uh, it's, it's doable. And it, uh, I think it's also like where, where, you, where you set your objectives uh, towards. Um, uh, yeah, I've just uh, summarized some recommendation and uh, Joris uh, uh, just asking you to jump in here to to extend uh, if I'm missing something from from your point of view. Uh, so we have not synchronized them beforehand. Um, uh, so like of summarizing it, do vulnerability management for SAP as you do for for other um, IT systems and, and, and software in your infra infrastructure. Um, so SAP is basically it's still a technology; it's nothing else, and uh, um, there is a need to do SAP vulnerability management or managing SAP vulnerability management. Um, define objectives and measure them with metrics. So um, don't put yourself into the position as with the example to create a vulnerability backlog, uh, because your mean time to remediate is actually not good enough. Um, so then figure out why is that the case and, and, and work on it. Like uh, use automation, force the business to, to test in, in, in shorter cycles. Um, um, yeah, so whatever actually the root cause may be addressing the root cause, um, make vulnerabilities comparable. Um, uh, however, which means don't, don't just prioritize them blindly on a CBSS base score. 
Um, so, but incorporate threats and uh, and the, and the asset values to determine the actual risk. Like it's it's certainly a difference if you uh, if you have a vulnerability in a business critical application uh, like SA, uh, like SAP, or if you if you have it on the on the web server, which is uh, uh, I don't know, like for example, just publishing the lunch menu for the canteen every day. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, if you if your staff on resource as uh, as basically everybody, <laughs> specifically with the transformation to S for HANA using SAP, uh, automate the repetitive tasks, uh, specifically the scanning um, and the correction verification part. Um, yeah, uh, Joris, anything to add over here? No, no, just to stress in one important one. So if you ask me, you can leave out the last four because they are all derived from the first one. <laughs> So it's really where it starts. Have that process in place. Make sure that you incorporate SAP soft vulnerabilities in your general IT vulnerability management process. And then the rest will follow because then you will start thinking about how often, how much, which assets, how do we compare them? That's all derived from that. And crazy but true, we still see quite some customers that don't have this process properly in place or not at all in place and that's where it all starts mm. really have have that have it there and i know people don't like processes in general <laughs> but this is an important one it all starts there yeah all right uh i think that uh was a great chat uh, thank you very much Royce, for that and uh hey guys everybody please take the chance uh to to chat with us uh, just seeing if there are any uh any questions uh martin uh, uh thank you for the session thank you very, very, thank you very much martin and uh, yeah now take the chance to mingle with us and uh, we'll be stop broadcasting now